cordon trained, more specifically bilateral cordon trained, to what we would call a head trained spur pruned block. Cane pruning or guillo style pruning, a single uh, guillo pruning, if you will, or a single cane prune. Really head trained spur prune, kind of a, a goblet style pruning. This is kind of on a, on a miniature goblet scale, if you will, that we use a, a double cane or a double guillo. Uh, method in the still head train um, a double pruning pass Everybody and welcome to our first episode of Vineyard Talks of 2019. We are taking a little stroll through our newest established vineyard blocks here on the Podoreski Vineyard. Uh, these vines were planted just last year in 2018. And um, what we wanted to talk about today as we're making our way through an incredibly wet winter, um, it's the beginning of March and we are I think about at over well over 20 inches of rainfall here at Podoreski Vineyard um, and we're like close to reaching the 40 inch mark out at York Mountain. Um, so quite quite the the winter rainfall events. Um, but what we've been trying to work on is getting through pruning so I thought it would be a good time to uh, shoot some video and talk about pruning, uh, what it is, why it's so important and uh, what are the different ways that we do it um, between the different epic ranches. Um, so sit tight and we'll take a look at some, some different vines, some different vineyard blocks and uh, different pruning methods. Okay, so when we say, hey, we've been working on pruning or hey, it's time to go out and, and get our grapevines pruned up. What, what is it that we're talking about? Well, in, in kind of a simplistic way, what we're, what we're saying is that it's time to, to cut away or trim off the, the unwanted growth from our grapevines from the previous year to set the stage for our growing season of this year. So grapevines are deciduous plants. They enter dormancy um, in late fall or early winter, and they kind of sleep um, all through the winter months and then come spring their buds are going to push and start new growth. And if we do nothing to them, then all the buds that they kind of grew and developed last year are going to try to grow new growth this year. And for most cases, that's not something that we want um, here at Epic. We want to select the different growing points for the grapevines to kind of control their canopy growth and our, their uh, fruit targets for the season. On one hand, we use pruning um, to direct our, our growth, or what we might call um, our training, training of the vines. And then on the other hand, um, setting our, our fruit targets or our yield targets, um, pruning is like that first major step in directing um, what the vine could or should hold for the, for the growing season in, in yields. Um, so a more conservative approach to pruning uh, would leave more growing points or more buds on the vine um, and thus the potential of higher yields uh, where more liberal pruning or more aggressive pruning would leave fewer buds on the vine and thus um, a lower fruiting potential um, depending on what you're shooting for. So as I was making my way from our previous block um, into this next section, uh, we actually started to get a little bit of rainfall to start. Um, and it reminded me to talk about timing of pruning for a little bit here. At first, you may not think that timing is super important, but it actually has quite an impact um, in a few different ways. And one of the things that we've really tried to focus on with timing here at Epic is to try to delay pruning as late as we possibly can. Um, and the reason for that is that many studies have 
been made. Um, and there's a plethora of different fungal and bacterial diseases that can get into the woody parts of the vine. And we know that rainfall, of all things, is um, what transports these diseases. Sorry, I didn't mean to cover me up there. Transports these diseases into the into the vine through the open pruning wounds. So it is a super huge no-no to prune during active rainfall or even a heavy fog, if you will. If there's moisture in the air that's making enough uh, collection to, to make droplets um, or splashes, you're, you're gonna be um, potentially spreading these pathogens around. For example, I'm talking about Utypa or something like that. Um, so what we found um, is that the later we can wait to prune, um, the better, and there's two reasons for that. One is generally, if we wait till later to prune, um, we've kind of are starting to exit the rainy season. That's not so much the case this year as we've had rain kind of all throughout the winter months and starting into the spring here. Um, so if you wait later, you can tr kind of avoid the likelihood of rainfall events happening um, during your pruning. But also, if you wait long enough and the sap flow of the vines have started um, because of the spring, you get this positive uh, pressure in the vascular system. And so the pathogens that are being spread by the rainfall aren't strong enough to penetrate the tissue because there's positive pressure coming out of the vine vis-a-vis uh, -vis the sap flow. So anyway, that was a quick side note as we're getting some of the wet stuff to fall from the sky uh, currently, and uh, then we'll move on to our next screen system. Okay, so I'm standing here in a new block of Tempranillo out at uh, Potterescu Vineyard. Um, these vines were just planted last year in 2018 um, as, as dormant vines. Um, so for us in our, in our vineyard block, they're one year old, um, but I think in totality of their life, they're technically two year old vines. Anyway, um, we left last year, we left one to two shoots uh, growing um, from them. And this year we need to come in and um, prune them to start their training process. And so we need to make some decisions on whether they have grown enough last year to leave um, a cane for the, to establish their trunk, or if we need to prune them back down to two buds um, so that they can grow a stronger shoot for a trunk this coming year. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of options and how we approach this uh, pruning method for training reasons. All right, so here we have a young Tempranillo vine um, that is a great candidate uh, for our trunk establishment this year, our trunk uh, training, we, we would say. Um, we have a great, um, this, this had one shoot growing last year, and now you can see the, sh the green shoot last year is turned into a, a dormant cane. Um, it's, one, it's a one-year-old cane. And so in these young vines, um, obviously we're, we're just talking about training here because we don't have any desire to, to hold fruit on them yet. They're so young um, and I would be really surprised if they even put out any fruit um, in 2019 anyway because they're so young. Um, so anyway, what we're trying to do is, um, this, the future goal of this block is to be what we would call a head trained spur pruned block. Um, I think we'll have an, uh, an example of this exact pruning style on an older block later on in the video. Um, but basically, uh, the training style of head train means that only the trunk portion will be the permanent part of the plant. Um, and we will prune down to spurs uh, every year for our new growth. Um, and so anyway. So here, here's what we're gonna do with these vines. We need to choose what height um, our trunk will stand at. And I think in this vineyard, we're, we're shooting somewhere for the 26 to 28 inch mark off of the ground. 
Um, so basically the, the first step, since it's only the one shoot here or the one cane that we need to prune, um, we will come in and select. So I, I'm, this may not be perfectly measured, but I think our, our head height is somewhere around this mark. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and come in and prune this guy here to get rid of the unwanted part of that shoot. Then all this other riffraff here um, are just lat what, were, what were lateral shoots last year um, that have hardened off. So we want to get rid of those because those aren't um, necessary to have either. So I'm going to just trim off these lateral shoots fairly close to what will be the trunk. Get rid of the tight tape. Okay, and so what we're left with is this what will be a trunk. Let's see if everybody can see that. There's the top of our our trunk here and we have a bud positioned here. So one, two, three, and four. We, it looks like we have about four buds um, above our drip wire here. Um, so at shoot thinning time, no question, anything below the drip wire uh, buds that push, we will remove at shoot thinning time and only keep things that are above the drip wire. Um, if these vines are strong enough to keep all four shoots um, or all four buds that push, we'll do, we will do that. Um, but we can also leave fewer things on the vine depending on its strength, um, but in positions that we really need for future pruning methods. Um, so this is kind of an example of, of, of pruning for training reasons. Again, just trying to direct the permanent architecture of the, of the vine. Um, and then we can jump into some other blocks to look at different ways of pruning um, for both the green growing architecture and for our yield targets for the year. Okay, so real quick, I did forget to mention... Um, what we would do in in training these young vines if the last year's growth doesn't quite meet the standard uh, to leave a trunk this year. Um, so I found a vine here that um, had two shoots left on it last year. So you can see the two canes um, that are growing out of the base of the vine here and have grown up. But overall, even though they kind of reached our height requirements, they're these shoots are quite spindly um, and really don't have the girth um, that we're looking for to to leave a trunk uh, on. We generally are looking for cane thickness that would be at least a pencil, if not um, like our pinky pinky width. And so you can see how uh, how kind of spindly these shoots are. So what we're going to do on this is we're going to come back down here to the base of the vine and we're just going to leave a two bud spur so that we only leave two growing points as options for this coming season and hopefully those two shoots this year uh, will be much stronger than last year being that it's already has a whole season uh, in their ground under its belt um, here and so our selection process of which uh, buds to leave or where we want to leave our spur um, is another component of, of pruning for training, if you will. Uh, we have our stake here, which is our training stake that the trunk will be tied onto. So we want to leave buds that are closer to that stake um, so that we're not having any kind of bends or twists in our trunk as it's training. And um, we also want to choose things that are already pointing up so that we continue our vertical growth and not have something that's pointing down and then has to like push down and come up and around to uh, train up the stake. Um, so we have a, a shoot here that's a great candidate. We've got a butt, basal bud here and then another bud um, right, right there in front of my finger that we can leave as our two buds. So this, this cane in the foreground, I'm going to go ahead and just cut off. There is some dead wood in the back here that I'm going to cut off just to clean it up. And then we're gonna choose our cut mark right there to leave as our two bud spur. 
uh, for this vine and this year hopefully we'll get those strong shoots that we're looking for to train a trunk uh, next year in uh, 2020.